Hey everyone, it's Fox from Modelmaking.Guru here, uh, back with part 8 of our build of Drebin Striker from Metal Gear Solid 4, based on the Trumpeter 135th M1131 Striker. Hey, welcome back. Now you might be thinking, hello, it's been a long time, but what's going on here? Um, this episode, I'm going to show you, we've actually, this is going to be the last episode now. Uh, the model is finished, the diorama is complete. Here it is. Oh. I'm going to show you how we got from where we were last time to this. Um, quick sort of update. Uh, I was waiting for some decals, they did arrive. And then everything went horribly wrong. Um, I had an absolute nightmare with the decals. They, not the decals fault, probably something I was doing. They were custom made, but um, they had a very thick film. Quite simply, uh, because they were printed white on white paper, although the guy that made them for me was very kind and pre-cut them, uh, the film area around each decal was quite big. And I couldn't see the decal to trim the film around the decal, so basically I had to do as best I could. Um, they went on. Uh, most of them didn't want to adhere or conform to the surface, or the rough surfaces at all. So a lot of the decals had to be abandoned. Uh, even with Microsol and Microset, loads of that, a lot of them didn't want to sit down snug on the surface. So the ones that did survive, um, you'll see a few lumps and bumps here and there where there's a rivet and it's not quite settled around it. Um, you'll see some film around the decals that with successive varnishes I can't get rid of. So I've tried to weather those out. So basically I had a really, really bad time with the decals. The point where I had to actually paint the stripes on the turret here. I couldn't use the decal. Uh, I say no no bad word to you know the guy that did it. But I think I just had a, one of those days I think. Um, so from this point on, because I can't use all the decals. And it's not quite exactly what I envisioned as Drebin Striker. This shall no longer be known as Drebin Striker. This shall be known as Not Quite Drebin Striker. <laughs> So let's go and crack on. Um, we'll jump back in time now to when I uh, had put the decals on, I think. It's been about two weeks. We'll jump back in time uh, and crack on with getting it to this point. So let's carry on building, not quite, Drebin Striker. Anyway. Oh, sorry, wobbly camera. I'm banging it with my headset. Right, what we're going to do, we're going to do some uh, bits of weathering on this just to try and hide some of those errors. And... I think what I'm probably going to do is, Drebin's vehicle is actually quite clean and tidy, but because this is only not quite Drebin's thing, I think I'll go to town on the weathering. So what I'm going to show you first is a simple paint chipping technique, a um, slight variation on the one I normally do. What we're going to do, I don't know if you can see it because of the lighting, but we're going to add some subtle chipping uh, all over the vehicle. And this is um, a post-chipping effect. This isn't doing the chipping before you do all the main spraying uh, like I normally do, where I make the chips and then paint the vehicle. This is like a after-the-fact chipping. And it's quite simple. So what you need is a scouring pad, like a Brillo pad. Take the green bit off. And you want a little piece of the green bit. If you can get it off. It's quite tough. Yeah. There we go. So I want a green bit of that, maybe not quite as hairy. Fold it slightly so I get the, hope you can see this, fold it slightly so I get the broken edge and grab it in your tweezers. So I might take that edge because that's more scruffy. Now what I'm going to do is I've got a bit of a, to me a neutral grey here which is a lighter tone than the one that's on the bodywork and it's dead straightforward. What you do Get a bit of your neutral grey, uh, sorry, a bit of your paint, whichever colour you're using, depending on the colour of your vehicle. 
like dry brushing, just dab it off onto some tissue so you get most of it off because you don't want any big blobs. And then simply apply it to areas where you think there will be some wear and tear. Now I'm just very gently dabbing it. You build it up slowly. The advantage of the Brillo pad thing is it adds some randomness. You might not be able to see this, but it just adds a little bit of randomness to the mix. It's not like a brush where it's an even coat. You can build this up as much as you want, or as little as you want. This is the first step. So I'm going to overweather this basically because because I've got paint there. I'm going to overweather this because it's all just gone to pot. So I'm not fussed about making it accurate to the the actual vehicle now. We'll just have some fun with it. Go to town. You know I like my weathering. I'm a big weathering buff. Okay, right, the uh, initial chipping phase is done. As you can see, I've gone to town on it because I love me some weathering. It looks a bit over the top, but that's fine because at this point, I'm just having fun with this now and using it to show you different techniques. I don't care that it's not accurate now. This is just a fun project. Uh, I've zoomed in a little bit because what we're going to do next is the second stage of this little technique. Uh, we're going to need a small brush, tiny brush. Uh, I've got a little bit of Tamiya Red Brown mixed with some Tamiya Rubber Black just to make a dark reddish brown colour. Yeah. Um, what I want to simulate now is this is just where you know paint's chipped off a little bit and there's it's slightly lighter and there's scuffing and so on. I want to separate show some bits where paint has come off and exposed the undercoat underneath. Now a lot of military vehicles have um, anti-rust paint. It's usually a reddy brown, deep reddy brown colour. Um, so that's what I'm using for this. In reality, uh, Drebin's vehicle has like some kind of octo camo thing on it. It doesn't actually do that. Let me just check my focus so you can see. Um, but as I say, we've ventured away from accuracy now. We're just into having fun with this. And this is really simple. You just want to put a few little spots here and there to suggest a slightly deeper scratch than the rest of them. So all I'm doing is taking a tiny amount of red brown and just in and around some of the other little bits I've already done. So I'm just going to put tiny dots of paint. Ideally you want a nice fine brush for this. And I doubt you'll see any of this at all. But as with all things, just go very gently. Keep it random. Try and keep the little dots, little marks and red brown bits inside already painted faded areas because you're just suggesting where it's gone a little bit deeper and it's either I mean this can be either you know a rust proof coating or it could be just rust itself and I'm just doing very subtle little marks you probably can't see any of this because it's so small but you'll get the idea In the case of these decals, I actually designed these myself. I just went into Photoshop, found the relevant fonts by comparing them with the screenshots from the game, and going through my list of thousands of fonts to try and find the right ones, um, and designed them and sent in the artwork. And he got it spot on. I'll be, you know, credit to him. He got it spot on. I'll carry on doing this because it's really boring for you to watch. And it's going to take me a while. It's one of those weathering techniques that if you don't do this kind of chipping at the start, because I didn't plan on doing chipping, um, it can take quite a while. So if you've got a favourite podcast to listen to or some music in the background, I actually listen to a giant bomb podcast when I'm doing models. I've got like five years worth and there's hundreds and hundreds of them. And I love them, so... If you see me in my modelling den working, 
need some water in that paint because it's gone a bit thick. You can dilute these acrylics with thinner, but sometimes if you do these little quick jobs, just a little dot of water is fine. Uh, yeah, so if you see me in my, in my modelling cave, undoubtedly you'll hear the dulcet tones of the giant bomb cast. I strongly recommend it. If you like video games, strongly recommend it. It's hilarious. And the guys are idiots. Right, so I'll carry on with this. Activate the fast forward button. And when we come back, uh, what's next? I think we'll do a... I was going to give it a smoke wash, but I think what we'll try and do, because I've not done one before, really, is we'll try and do an oil pin wash just to get some shading without covering the whole model. So leave this with me. I'll go off and do this. And when we come back, we shall do the pin wash. Okay, back in a moment. Right, and we're back. Okay, right, the model's had time to dry now with the coat of varnish. Uh, what we're going to do next is a oil pin wash. Uh, normally, if you know me, I'd just um, get some Tamiya smoke on there and wash over the whole thing. But I thought I'd try something different this time, uh, something I've not tried before, which is uh, a pin wash using oil paints. Um, similar to a wash, but we're targeting it on certain areas rather than across the whole model. We're not just going to douse the whole thing. Uh, basically, we're going to get oil paint into the grooves and corners and joins. Um, hope it'll give a little bit of shadowing. Now I have done a little bit of this already and the camera didn't record all of it so I've had to start again. So I'm going to do this front bit here. Uh, it's quite simple. I'm using um, MIG 502 Abtai Lung Starship Filth which you know I love and I'm just going to check my focus. Um, it's not just for Starships, you can use it for anything. I find it really good on um, gun metal to give it a sort of used weapon look as well. It's a good shading um, colour. It's like the oil paint version of smoke, basically. Uh, very simple. I've got a little bit of that. Uh, I have some odourless oil thinners, odourless turpinoid, a uh, big fat brush, and a small thin brush. And all I'm going to do is very simple. Area or panel at a time. I'm going to just liberally apply some of the thinner. And then get myself some of the Starship Filth. I've thinned it ever so slightly. Get myself some of the Starship Filth. Make sure you can see it. And all I'm going to do is get that. Well, actually, what I'm going to do first is get that hair out that I've just seen. Let me just remove this hair that's just come off the brush. Thank you. Not required. Okay, so all I'm going to do is put little dots of paint. I'm going to get some paint. I'm going to run the brush into the into the little dots and holes. Let's try again. Where I want the paint to go. What it should do, the thinner means it should flow around corners and edges quite nicely. Now it may only be a subtle effect because this colour is actually quite similar to the base colour. But that also means it will blend a little bit so it should give me some shading around panel edges because it will bleed out of the panel slightly, panel line slightly, but that's fine. And the beauty of using oils, and you can do this with enamels as well, because they take a while before they cure, so you can do it with enamels as well, but the beauty of doing it this way is that if you screw up, if you make a mistake, get a blob of paint somewhere you don't want it. No problem. Just Get yourself a dry brush and wipe it off. If it's too much paint, the dry brush will suck the paint up. If it's just paint somewhere you don't want it, it'll just remove it. Right, so I'll go and crack on and get the rest of the vehicle done. 
uh, and then I'll see how we're doing for time. I need to let it dry obviously for a long time so I'll crack on and get the rest done see how we're doing for time and see if we can fit anything else in. So back in a moment. Right okay yeah we've got loads of time so we'll crack on. Uh, since I filmed that last little tiny segment uh, my little side stickers, the I Have You stickers have arrived. Um, as with the other decals, stickers, what am I talking about? Decals even. Uh, as with the other decals, they really resisted moulding into the surface outlines and edges and so on. So, uh, what can you do? I put lots of Microsol on them and they didn't really take to where the rivets are. Um, they're super shiny, even though they've had some matte varnish. They'll, they'll bed down a bit when they get some matte varnish taken off. Uh, but what can you do? What can you do? Um, we're just having fun with this now. I also painted the stripes on the gun shield. I decided just to paint those because the decals didn't work. So um, these little bits where there's rivets and they go a bit messy, I'll, I'll probably just weather those over. Uh, so what we're going to do, without any further ado, do 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 do. Uh, we're going to put some uh, muddy wash on the underside and on the wheels. And for this, I'm going to use the um, Ultimate Modeling Products mud. Uh, I wanted to try these for a while. Basically, it's unlike a normal wash that I do, which is a paint wash, uh, where you just wash it on and leave it with acrylics. This is designed, it's clay based, and it's designed to be put on and then removed just to leave stuff behind. So it's not um, a paint, it's just a, a special solution, I suppose. It's water based, it's non toxic. Paul from uh, Ultimate says you can drink it if you want, it just won't taste very good. There's nothing harmful in it. Um, so I'm just shaking it now, you can hear me. I'm giving it a darn good shake. And he also suggests do a bit of that. That's probably freaking out my camera. Just to get all the sediment loose. When you first see it, you'll see them, it's separated out. You can't see that. I don't know if you can see there's like the fluid and the sediment. So Also, apologies if it sounds a bit bung. Since I did the last video, I've developed a stinky cold. As you always do. So, Right, so I shall get myself a reasonable brush. Have I got a big floppy brush? This will do. That's an oil brush. I don't want that one. This one will do. Right, so I'll get myself a brush. Uh, you can airbrush this stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Or you can uh, just paint it directly on. I'll just get myself a little stand of some sort. Three spray can lids, bit of blue tack, done. Uh, and carefully place this on. Now you can't see any of this. Brilliant. Got to be careful of all the little sticky up details. <clears throat> Not pinging anything off. Let's try it. There's got to be a way to do this. Must be possible. Near enough. Right, so you can just about see that. So all I'm going to do is, and all you do do, is decant a little bit of the solution into a small... I'm using... Uh, these, I've just put everything in the way of the camera now, haven't I? I'm using these little cupcake pots. Dirt cheap from any bakery store, if such a thing exists. I got these from Hobbycraft. The plastic lined inside so it doesn't seep through. So I've shaken the uh, the wash. I'm going to oh, give it another good shake. It looks a bit thin. So I'm just going to shake the wash again. I'm using mud. Mud. So put a bit of the wash into the little pot, so it looks like that. It does separate out quite quickly, so you have to keep an eye on it and keep stirring it. And all I'm going to do is, rather carelessly and quite quickly, just slap it on. I'm not going to be thinking about it too much. Just put it on, and then we'll take it off when it's dried. So I hope you can see all this. Let me just move this back. So quite basically just slap it on. Well, it looks quite bright now but it should darken down nicely. And of course because of the, the varnish it's tending to collect in areas rather than just be a flat coating. And this is really just to simulate dirt and mud underneath. So we'll just go around and put some of this on. Uh, 
and this is as complicated as the application gets. So I'll go and do the rest of this, uh, leave it to dry and when we come back we'll start taking that off and then we'll do some more weathering on top. So I'll go and crack on back in a moment. And we're back. Okay, right. That's now dried. I've done the whole vehicle in that uh, in that UMP wash. What I did was I did the mud, but then after, while the mud was still wet and dripping, um, I added a soup son of dark dirt. I went over it with dark dirt. That blended into the mud nicely and just darkened it down uh, because the mud was quite dark. The wheels, I don't know if you can see this, the wheels are still drying, but they look nice and muddy. Now that'd be fine if you were driving through a European forest, but you want real mud. But we don't want too much mud. Uh, there's another, there's a sandy weathering layer after this. So what I'm going to do, the beauty of this UMP stuff, because it's water-based and clay, I think, I think it's clay. Apologies, Paul, if it's not. Um, you can take it back off again. You can either uh, just use a cloth or a cotton bud just to rub it off smear it around and blend it in uh, or you can dampen the cloth of the cottonwood slightly and remove it completely if you wanted just to go into the panel lines like these uh, you could use it as a panel line wash the dark dirt -da, apparently is quite popular with aircraft modelers because it's quite a nice medium dark tone to go into panel lines um, and basically what you do you get yourself a cotton bud or a cloth you, you dampen it slightly and you just rub off around where you don't want the wash and it would leave it in the panel line. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the wash on, but I'm going to just subtle, make it more subtle. And all I'm going to do is very basic. That is a dry cotton bud. I don't know if you're able to see this. I'm just going to go into where the the the, uh, the wash is and just rub it away, blend it. I'm not I've not dampened it because I don't want to remove it too much. I'm just going to blend it in. It'll remove it from where I don't want it, but it'll leave it in. The little recesses but it will leave a slight tone on the on the paint when I've rubbed it off just a slight discoloration I quite like this bit here and if you can see it see if we can show you that hang on let me try my focus I like this bit here where it's got little splotches on the white bit I like that and this is what I mean about happy accidents you see sometimes when you're weathering don't plan too much other than what you're going to use how you're going to apply it but when it actually comes to applying it and removing things just, just randomize it just go for it and see what happens so I'll take this bit off around here. It rubs it away, but it doesn't remove it completely. Let's make sure you can see. I've gone for a bit more of the dark oil, uh, the dark dirt on the top rather than as much as the mud, because all the mud is underneath. So we're going to do a sandy uh, dry brush to get the lighter sandy tones. Oh, we've got some moisture on there. Picked up some moisture. No, not to worry. The thing about real weathering is it's completely random. Well, not completely random. Some of it's due to like, you know, wear and tear, but things like mud and dirt is completely random. So that is all I intend to do, is just spend the next half hour just going over, getting rid of a lot of this. I'll take you quite a few cotton buds. And just rub away I'll probably dampen it at some point to get rid of some of the bigger patches rub away where I don't want it so I'll go off and do the rest of this when we come back I shall show you my little special technique for uh, using oil paints and pastels together to do the sand texture or the sand effect so you know what I'm gonna say back in a moment Okay, and we're back. Right, I have, while I've been off camera, attached the wheels, finally. Um, rubbed off all the UMP wash that I didn't want. Uh, I don't know if you can see now on film, but uh, there's now little dark patches and bits everywhere, but not covering the whole vehicle. So it looks much nicer now, much more subtle. Uh, took a lot off the nose here. Um had to redo the wash under here when I varnished it with if you could see it would be helpful when I varnished it uh, a lot of the, the wash blended away so I had to put another coat underneath and for some reason the varnish went cloudy and white in some areas I don't quite know why that happened uh, but that was weird so that's all done next I'm going to show you something rather funky I'm going to add a, a sort of sand coloured layer 
to the underside to the wheels and the nose and things like that um the way i'm going to do it is a bit unusual there's a thousand different ways of doing like sandy dusty type weathering ump themselves do a, a sand wash but i want something more controllable so i'm going to do what i always like doing which is dry brushing oil paints so let me show you what we're going to do uh, i have a my little oil palette with some white oil paint standard artists oil paint uh, and i also have tamir's weathering master pastels what i have done is if i get it open i've ground up this this section here which is uh sand ground that up nicely and all i'm going to do is mix the pastel if you can see this hopefully mix the pastel with the white oil paint and see what happens now i've used this before in various effects i did a model of a land speeder and i used this to make the the dusty sandy texture on the clear glass on the windscreen so that came out quite well I'm going to mix all this in and it's going to make well, apart from a gloopy mess oops especially if I spill it everywhere it can get a bit messy it takes a little bit of patience but what you get if this works it can go quite stodgy when you do this you have to mix it around for a while to make sure all the colours are mixed in. It's actually going to be a bit white this, so I might need to add more sandy colours. Oh, that might be alright. Tell you what I should do. Get a little bit of my oil thinners in a moment and mix some of that in. Unfortunately my oil thinners are underneath the phone which is the camera which is being supported by the bottle of oil thinners. Brilliant. Okay, so that gives us a very thick and stodgy, if you'll see the colours on screen, a very thick and stodgy sand colour. Uh, what I'm going to have to do is pause for a moment because I need my thinners and my thinners are underneath the camera. So give me one second, I'm back in a moment. Sorry about that. Right, so what I did was I had a little bit of thinner to this mix. I kept mixing it around and now we've got this kind of sandy coloured paint. Uh, what I will do now is, and you've seen me do this a thousand times before, do some dry brushing. I've also, the brush that I mix the paint with, I've kept that thinner with the sandy colour in it, because I can use that for a wash, just to go into edges. So you know how this works. I'm just going to put my paint in there. You know how this works. Take a load of paint on the brush, get most of it off on here, then apply it to the model. What I'll need to do first is put on some gloves so I can avoid all the fingerprints. As I've said before, when you're doing oil paints or enamels or anything that takes a while to dry, but this sounds horrible, these little squidgy noises. Uh, any paint that takes a while to dry, uh, try and wear gloves if you can, just to avoid putting fingerprints anywhere. And it helps keep it off your hands as well, and then you transfer it to your clothes or the dog or the wife or whatever. So. I shall now carefully get myself some paint. You might not be able to see this, but I'll do my best. Load up the brush. This is the white oil paint with the mixed in with the Tamiya sand pastel. Get most of this off on the paper. It's kind of a fleshy colour. Most off on the paper. Do, 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 do. And then quite simply, and very carefully avoiding the wing mirrors, quite simply, all I'm going to do is this. I'm just going to dry brush this in. Take a bit more off because there's still a bit too much on there. What I want to do, if I can get my angles right, and also so you can see it, what I want to do is build up very slowly sandy effect. I'm not trying to paint sand on, I'm just trying to add some fading to the grey. I'm just trying to fade, catch the highlights anyway like you can see here, but also this bit's fading a little bit just to lighten it, but I'm lightening it with the sandy tone. Just so it has that ever so slight graded effect, like I've airbrushed it. 
and that's why I love oil paints so much because you can do this acrylics tend to clump up as I've said before oils are always smooth and you can have so much control when you're dry brushing so much delicate work you can do with this stuff uh, so a bit more if I want a particularly light patch I can just focus on that hope you can see this I have no idea where the camera is when I'm painting so so you can see there that patch is a little bit lighter it just helps make it look really see, see mud splatters on but dust and sand they just kind of gradually build up and it's almost a faded effect and this is all I'm looking to do now so that is the kind of effect I want um, I shall now go away and do the rest of this uh, I'm going to do the underside the backs and the fronts of the wheels and I'll do under here and I'll probably do a bit up the sides but I don't want to go too intense on the top because that's where sand wouldn't necessarily sit around but what I might do is use the thinner I had that's now sand coloured just to go into some of the little nooks and crannies uh, and as if sand's collected in a groove so leave this with me I shall crack on uh, and then when we've done that I think all that's left to do is stick the gun on and put it on the diorama and I think we might be done I didn't think I'd finish it in this episode so leave that with me I'll be back in a second okay that oil paint uh, dry brush is our time to dry and we are looking about done I think my friends uh, they won't really come out on film because the colors are a lot more blasted on video but it's a nice sandy subtle faded shade um, all around I went all around the, the back a bit more on the bottom than on the top just to make it look cool on the sides and my favorite bit on the front which I don't know if you can see because of the lighting. Let me turn it that way around. Probably see it better. And underneath as well. Um, I'll leave that to dry overnight. I probably won't varnish it because I don't think it needs varnish now. It's matte anyway. Uh, I stuck the 50 cal gun on. That's not going to be varnished at all. It's basically painted to be a metallic sheen. It's to me a gun metal um, with some 502 Ab Tai Lung Starship Filth rubbed all over it and then uh, rubbed off with a towel like a wash almost but it wasn't thinned that was just to get it in all the little crooks and nannies uh, then once that had all dried it was dry brushed with Tamiya flat aluminium to give it that nice metallic sheen I don't want to change my focus because my camera is very wobbly at the minute so I don't want to give you a wobbly picture but that will be I think just about it uh, let me grab the diorama and we'll put it in place in its home. You might remember this from all those episodes ago, from many, many months ago. So we shall put this here. That's where he lives. And there we have our finished model and diorama. I did the little gun there as well. Uh, I can't remember who makes that now. Um, it escapes me but we have now finished my friends it's been a really interesting build the kit itself is fantastic uh, the trumpeter it's M1131 trumpeters fire support vehicle brilliant kit really really nicely molded lots of fine details loads of nice photo etch in there as well um, other, manu other manufacturers are starting to tumble to the idea of using photo etch in their kits to me have just started doing it a little bit uh, so it's good that people are um, the kit itself absolutely fine. I did have a lot of problems with the decals. Well, hey, sometimes it goes that way. Um, I lost heart a little bit, as you may have picked up in my tone of voice at the start of this video, but uh, I pulled it back quite nicely. I managed to recover it, I think. Uh, it's not quite Drebin Striper, uh, Striker, but uh, near enough. Uh, but I'm really pleased with that. I'm really pleased with the diorama. Diorama on a budget, just some basic. Um, foam core board and a cheap picture frame which I've painted uh, neutral grey that's it 
Um, if you're just starting out, it's a great way to start doing a diorama. You could get more complicated. You could get deeper picture frames and put bases into them and have get plywood to make little mounted areas and things like that. Um, but for the sake of this build, just to keep it simple for you, I've just done a really nice basic diorama. Uh, but that is, that's everything. I think we're done. So um, what I'll do, I'll take some proper beauty shots of it for you so you can have a proper look at the end. Um, but it just remains for me to thank you very much for watching. Uh, it's been a joy to build. Uh, less of a joy to stick decals on. Uh, many, many thanks to the guys at emodels.co.uk for supplying this kit um, for asking me to do this film for them. Um, go along to their website, emodels.co.uk, strangely enough. Absolutely fantastic web store, the best one I've ever come across. Um, if they haven't got it, you don't need it. You know I say that. Uh, they're always really helpful. If you have a problem or if there's something you can't find, give them a shout. They'll be more than happy to help you out. Uh, and go along to their Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash emodelsltd. Fantastic community. You can see lots of good work on there. Send them your work and they'll post it up. Uh, and it'll keep you updated on uh, products that are coming into stock and special offers and things like that. It's the best place to keep up to date with, uh, with emodels. Um, and as always, pop along to my website, uh, modelmaking.guru. That's www.modelmaking.guru. Uh, got a blog, got galleries, got loads of things going on at the minute, uh, some commissions. Uh, I've also got a Facebook and a Twitter page, but you'll find that through the website. Pop along and have a look at uh, my stuff. Um, all kinds of stuff happening right now. So busy with model making, it's unbelievable. Uh, don't know what's happening next. Might be a pause before the next one, because um, I've got so many commissions on at the minute, I'm a bit pushed for time. But we'll see what happens. Uh, but pop along to eModel's Facebook page, check out the builds by Ted of his typhoon nearly said hurricane i kept calling it a hurricane what an idiot how can i not know my world war ii fighter planes hello um his hurricane is tiffy it looks fantastic um and i think he's coming to the end of his now as well so that looks beautiful um but yeah take care of yourselves uh i will be back at some point with something new we'll find something interesting to build um but thank you again take care of yourselves and as always adios amoebas Snake? Snake? Snake!